This is part 16 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to display validation error messages to the user, styling the error messages using Bootstrap, and finally, how to disable the submit button if the form is not valid. So, here is what we want to do. If the full name field is not valid, we want to display a red border around the input field, and we also want to change the label text to red and then display the validation error message. Full name is required just below the input field as you can see right here. On the other hand, when we start typing something into the full name field and when the field is valid, we want the red border and the validation error message to disappear and we also want the label text to return to its normal black color. Now, to style the validation error messages, we'll be using the Bootstrap framework. From the Bootstrap framework, these are the three classes that we will specifically be using to style the validation error messages. Has error, control label, and help block. We discussed form validation states in part 23 of Bootstrap tutorial. So if you're new to Bootstrap, I suggest please check out our Bootstrap course before proceeding. So take a look at this text article from our Bootstrap tutorial. This is part 23, Bootstrap form validation states. Now, if we scroll down a bit, and if you take a look at this age field, this is how we want to style our full name field if there is a validation error message. And if you take a look at the HTML associated with this field, notice on the div element that has the form group class, we're using has error class. And on the label that displays age, we're using control label class. And then finally, to display the validation error message, we're using a span element with the help block class. So let's do this for our full name field. Here is the full name field HTML, and here is the development that has the form group class. So on this development, we want to add this class has error, but we don't want to add this class always to this development. We only want to add it conditionally if there is a validation error message. And how can we find out if there is a validation error message? Now, in our previous video, we discussed form validation properties. So we can use this template reference variable, full name control, and then check out its invalid property. So we're going to use class binding here. And this is how the class binding looks like. We use the keyword class, and then whatever class we want to apply. We want to apply has error class. And we want to apply this class conditionally. So within codes, I'm going to use our template reference variable, which is full name control. And then we know it has got the validation property invalid. So if this property returns true, only then this class will be added. If it returns false, the class will be removed if it's already present. So this is going to conditionally add or remove our has error class, depending on whether there is a validation error or not. Next, on the label element that displays this text full name, we want to add this class, control label. If there is a validation error, the text will turn red. Otherwise, it will be in its normal black color. Finally, we need to include this span element to display the validation error message. So just below our full name input field, let's include the span element. And on this span element, we are going to use the bootstrap class help dash block. And within the span element, our validation error message is going to be full name is required. And remember, we don't want this span element to always be displayed. We only want to display it if there is a validation error message on this full name input field. And to conditionally hide or remove the validation error message, we are going to use the ngf structural directive. And we are going to bind this ngf structural directive to the invalid property of the full name control template reference variable. So if this property invalid is true, then this span element will be added to the DOM. Otherwise, it will not. There we go. Notice the validation error message is displayed as expected. At the moment, full name field is required. And since we don't have anything typed in the full name field, we see the validation error message, full name is required. The moment we type something in the field, the validation error message disappears. And if we delete what we have typed, notice the message appears again. Now, let's enhance this form validation a bit more. 
At the moment, the validation error messages are displayed on the initial form load. Some users does not like the idea of having these validation error messages displayed even before they had the opportunity to touch the field. So here is what we want to do. On the initial form load, we do not want to display the validation error message. When the user touches the field and if he leaves that field without typing anything, then we want to display this validation error message. Full name is required. Now this is easy to achieve. You might have already guessed we could use touched property. So here's what we want to do. If the field is invalid and if it is touched, only then add this has error class. Along the same lines, if the full name field is invalid and if it is touched, only then display the validation error message. Notice on the initial form load, we don't see the validation error message. If I touch the field and leave it without typing anything, then we see the validation error message as expected. Now we can take this form validation to the next level by styling the valid fields with a different color. Here's what I mean. On the initial form load, we don't want to display a validation error message and we want the full name input field and its associated label to be styled like this with black color. Now if we touch the field and leave it, Without typing anything, the field is invalid, so we want to style it like this, as you can see on the left right here. Now, when I type something, and when the field becomes valid, we want to apply green color, indicating that the field is valid. Maybe something like this, that you can see on this text article, like the password field. We want the label text to be green, and the border around the input field also to turn green, indicating that you know the field is valid now. So to achieve this, all we have to do is conditionally add or remove this has success class on the div element that has the form group class. So just like how we are conditionally adding and removing this has error class, let's add and remove has success class conditionally. So we're going to use another class binding for that. This time the class name is has success and we want to add this class only when the full name field is valid. So we're going to use the template reference variable and on that we use the valid property. So if the valid property returns true, has success class will be added, otherwise it will not. Notice on the initial form load, we don't see the validation error message. If we touch the field and leave it without typing anything, we see the validation error message. If we make the field valid by typing in something, it's styled with green color as expected. Finally, let's discuss how to disable the submit button if the form is not valid. Now for that, we're going to use this employee form template reference variable. Notice into this variable, we are exporting the ng form directive. So we can use this variable to check if the form is valid or not. If it's not valid, then we can disable the submit button. At the moment, notice the submit button is not disabled. Even when we have a validation error, the submit button is still not disabled. So to disable that, let's use this employee form template reference variable and on the button element, let's use the disabled attribute and bind that to invalid property. Notice now the save button is disabled as expected. Now when we make the form valid by typing in something into the full name field, the button should be enabled. But notice the button is still not enabled. That's because if you look at our email input field, that field also has the required attribute and we don't have anything typed in the field. So the email field is invalid. As a result, our entire form is invalid. Now to make this form valid, we have to type something in the email field. And the moment we do that, notice the save button is now enabled as expected. As you can see, these validation properties provide a lot of power and flexibility when validating and displaying validation error messages. Here's the example that displays full name is required validation error message. And on this slide, we have the code to disable the save button when the form is not valid. Thank you for listening and have a great day.